Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to start developing and training the world to web model, which is a word embedding model. I've already given an introduction of word embedding in a separate video. So you can watch the link given in the I button above to go through the same. In this video, I'm going to show you the Python code to develop and train our, uh, you know, word to web model. So in the uh, subsequent video, I will be showing you how word embedding or word encoding are very close for similar words as well as uh, will show you how the similar words can be grouped together based on context they are being used. So I will be generating a chart in two dimensional space to show you how similar words are clustered together based on the context they are being used. Okay. And you would see some magical things uh, we could do with the text data in this uh, video and the next video. Okay, so this my uh, this video might be a little bit long, but please watch this video till the end if you want to see the magic happening around the text data. Folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, uh, virtual reality uh, and cloud computing. You can acquire the related skill set in order to advance your career in these fields. Uh, this channel takes on hands-on approach uh, to build AI based products and applications. So if you are new to this channel, then consider subscribing to our channel. Or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. Through word embedding, we try to group together the words which have similar context, uh, thereby getting them occupy close, uh, you know, getting them occupy close spatial positions. Consider the following, uh, you know, sentence: uh, Have a nice day, and have a great day okay so they both of these sentences have the same context if the words are similar then mathematically the cosine of angle between such vectors will be close to one that is angle close to zero the cosine similarity has an advantage because even if the two similar text or documents are far apart by the euclidean distance uh, chances are that they may still be oriented close together. The smaller the angle, the higher the cosine similarity. You can see the related formula on the screen here. Okay. Now let's quickly move on to the code. Okay. So I will be using the IMDB uh, movie review data set for this. Okay. And uh, the corresponding CSV file, uh, I've already downloaded that file from uh, one of the repository on my local system. Now I'm uh, going to actually upload that file to the uh, collab location, the remote collab location. And I'm going to cover that step as well. Okay, so let me open the Jupyter notebook. Uh, in fact, the collab load notebook real quick. So here is my Jupyter notebook. Okay. And uh, uh, the CSV file I'm talking about is the CSV file, which I told you earlier, uh, which will contain this data. Uh, the reviews data is this CSV file. You can see it. So there are uh, basically uh, two uh, columns here. One is the reviews column. Another one is the sentiment associated with that column. Okay. Uh, so you can see here that review uh, this is the first review and the sentiment is positive for this review in the second row this is the review and the sentiment is again positive so these are the columns for this data set okay so in the first cell i'm importing uh, you know i'm first importing the libraries like pandas numpy the standard libraries for mathematical operations and you know some uh, uh, structured data related uh, operations as well as the classes uh, you know related to performing word tokenization like this uh, and remove punctuation so th this is a class 
uh, which can remove uh, the punctuations as well as uh, can tokenize the sentences as well. Okay, so then there is a class for removing, uh, you know, the stop words, so and so forth. Okay, so in the next cell, I'm first importing uh, here, you can see here. So in the next cell, I'm first importing the files uh, class here, right? So this is the files class from google.colab package. And in the next line, I'm using the files class method, this method. Uh, called upload. Okay, so there's this method is associated with the files class Okay, so I'm using this method called upload to upload a file from my uh, local drive to the Google collab cloud location and This is a very handy method whenever you want to upload any type of file from a uh, local system to remote collab location Okay, and the file which I'm uploading is same file this one okay so i'm uploading it to the collab location collab remote location okay so um, next i'm reading this particular file the csv file which is imdb underscore data set dot csv so i have created a data frame first and then i'm reading this uh, uh, reading this imdb underscore data set uh, file Okay, and storing the data inside this data frame called data. Okay, so I named the data frame as data and then next I'm kind of, uh, you know, printing first few rows of it. So using hat, I'm printing first few rows of it and you can see very well that the column reviews is there and then the sentiment is there. Okay, so it was read successfully. Okay, please note that I will be using the Gensim implementation of the word to work here. So the first step is to prepare the text corpus for learning the embedding by creating word tokens, thereby removing any punctuation and stop words from it. Please note that the word to work algorithm processes text or documents sentence by sentence. Okay, so this is the important thing to keep in, the, keep in, in mind. Okay, so in the next cell, uh, I first initialized, uh, you know, this particular review data list. Okay, so this is a list which I first initialized to store uh, individual tokenized words. So I will be storing the individual tokenized words in this particular list. So in the next line, I fetched all the reviews as the list items and stored the result in INDV uh, lines, INDV underscore lines, which is individual lines. Okay. Next, I utilized for loop, uh, you know, to remove the punctuations and uh, create the individual tokens in one go. So you can see here, I'm using this regexp tokenizer class or object, class object to basically uh, remove the punctuations depicted by this particular regular expression which is slash w plus okay so this is a regular expression and i'm removing all the punctuations depicted by this particular regular expression okay using this object called regexp tokenizer and if you want to learn more about this step in detail then please watch the nlp tokenization video which i have already created so i have given the link of it in the i button above so you can go through that video to get the complete details of it. Next, I converted all the words to lowercase here. Okay, so you can see here, I just converted them to lowercase for consistency, consistency perspective because you know, you, you can encounter a word uh, wherein in all the characters in it are in, you know, small letters. And sometimes what happens, the same word is present twice, but its first letter is in capitals, okay? So there might be, uh, you know, duplicate entries of the same words in, in this particular corpus. So what we do is we just try to convert all the words into lower case, and then we try to remove the duplicate words, which I'm doing pretty much here, okay? In this particular uh, section. So in the next line, what I did was I first invoked all the English 
stop words and then in the next line i removed uh, you know all the english stop words from our reviews so if you see this uh, i'm using this object stop words and invoking all the english stop words here and removing any duplicate uh, words using this set operator okay so now this this will contain all the english stop words this particular variable called stop underscore word underscore list contains all the uh, stop words of english okay and here in this particular line i'm just removing all the uh, stop words okay uh, all the english stop words from our reviews okay using this particular line of code okay later on i stored all the uh, all of these words in a review data list which is this list which i initialized here right so i i'm appending uh, all those words okay here so whatever word which is not present in the stop word list are chosen and those words are then appended to this list because those are the words which are actual words and not stop words okay so i repeat whatever words here in this section uh, what i'm checking is whatever word is not present in this stop word list okay will be appended to this review data list okay and uh, you know lastly i checked how many review line review data how many review lines do we have in our text corpus or data set here okay so i'm just checking the number of lines the review lines uh, we have in this particular corpus so you can see that we have 50000 lines here in this corpus okay all right so let's move on uh, let me scroll down okay so in the next cell i first imported the gemsim package and then in the next line so this is the gemsim package i'm importing so in the next cell uh, uh, i first uh, uh, you know defined this variable called embedding underscore dimension and assigned a value 100 to it this will be used later on in uh, you know when when we are going to train our model what to work model and i explain uh, the significance of it so uh, uh, in the next line you can see very well here i am just uh, creating and training the gensim word to work model by passing arguments like sentences okay which is nothing but the list of sentences and how can we get those sentences from this uh, particular list which is review underscore data underscore list and we counted that we had 50 cent 50000 sentences in here right so those sentences will be used here okay so this is the parameter which depicts that okay um, and here i pass this list of review sentences now the next argument was size which was depicting the number of dimensions so this size is depicting the number of dimensions in which we want to represent our word okay so you can see here that i have defined the number of dimensions as 100 here okay uh, this is basically the size of a word vector okay next argument is worker which uh, is nothing but the number of threads which were used in training parallelization in order to speed up the uh, training okay so the some parallel uh, processing will happen using this uh, workers uh, parameter mm -hmm. which has the value 4 here okay so the last argument was min underscore count these depict the uh, word which has frequency greater than min underscore count such that these words can only be included into the model please note that the bigger uh, that the bigger and more extensive your text is the higher this number can be okay and lastly uh, you know um, i wanted to uh, see the vocabulary size so i used this model and uh, dot wb dot vocab function to do uh, the same okay and then when i ran the cell i got this following output which you can see the vocabulary size is 101791 okay so this is our vocabulary size okay folks 
So folks, this is it for this video. To conclude, uh, I first uh, did some uh, text transformation, uh, text data transformation, and then developed and trained the word to web model in this video. So let me ask you a question from this uh, video. Uh, there was a parameter called workers we provided in our word to work model. What was the purpose of that particular parameter? Please post your comment in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also ask your technical questions in the comment section. I will be glad to answer your questions. If you're watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. And in case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.